So we have uh, an example here. We're going to look at Milken's oil drop experiment. We want to uh, calculate a few things given some information. So in Milliken's oil drop, there is a charged drop. Um, in this case, it's going to be motionless. So the sum of forces on it is zero. Um, we have an estimate for the mass of the drop. We know the potential difference between the plates is 480 volts. We're going to look at that a little bit more closely. This is a big Millikan apparatus. The uh, separation between the plates is 16 centimeters. We want to find the electric field in between the two plates. And we want to find how much charge is on our oil drop, so what Q is. I'm going to take Y to point up. Now, thinking about the forces, if this oil drop is in equilibrium, well, we know there's a force of gravity acting on it, and that's going to point down. For it to be in equilibrium, its weight has to be canceled out by another force, and that's going to be the Coulomb force. And draw a force vector that is just as big but in the opposite direction for the Coulomb force. Um, we have the information that this is a positively charged oil drop and so that tells us um, that since the Coulomb force points up the electric field is also going to have to point up because the Coulomb force is going to be the charge on the drop times the electric field. So those vectors have to be parallel to each other. Um, since Q is positive, the Coulomb force is going to be parallel to the electric field. So I can go ahead and put in some electric field vectors, or field lines rather. So Milliken's oil drop is like parallel plate capacitor. So I'll draw some field lines that are uniformly spaced and parallel to one another. And they're all field lines that point We want to calculate what the electric field strength is. So we're going to use the definition of electric potential in terms of electric field. So the dot product of the electric field with a displacement vector is equal to minus the change and potential. And that's a consequence of uh, Coulomb's law and the Coulomb force being a conservative force. So it can be righted in terms of a change of potential energy. Now I think a little bit about this. So I picked Y to go up. So Y initial is at the bottom plate, Y final is at the top plate. That will give me my delta y vector. That is also going to tell me that this bottom plate is where I'm taking the value of the initial to be, and the top plate is where I'm taking the value of v final to be. So whatever is in your change in coordinate here for the displacement is the same as the final minus initial for delta V. So if I look at E dotted into delta Y, those are both parallel to each other. So E dot delta Y is going to be plus E delta Y times cosine 
cosine of zero degrees and cosine of zero degrees is one. E delta y, this would be the magnitude of the electric field times the plate separation d, and that will equal minus the change of potential. Let me just try to write this out carefully. Delta something is the final minus the initial. So let me rearrange this and I want to solve for the electric field. E is going to be minus the final minus the initial over D. The electric field is going to point in the direction to lower potential. So for a potential difference of 480, um, I could say that the initial is plus 480 volts and the final is zero. I just know that the electric field has to point lower potential. Um, I could pick like this to be plus 240 and that to be minus 240. My only constraint is that their difference delta D is 480 volts. So I'm going to have minus zero volts for V final, minus 480 volts for the initial, and it's over 16 centimeters, so it's 0 0.16 meters. And that works out to be an electric field of a nice round number, 3,000 volts per meter. So we've got this part figured out. Now, this is a unit for the electric field we haven't really seen before. Uh, so let me go through and show you that this isn't really any different than what we had previously. So I have a volt per meter. A volt is a joule per coulomb, and I still have the meter and the denominator. A joule is a newton meter. So I'll have a newton meter over a coulomb meter. And now this should look more familiar. So the meters cancel out. So a volt per meter is actually the same thing as a newton per coulomb, which is what we were more familiar with when we first introduced the electric field. So anytime you have an electric field, you can measure it in volt per meter, if that's more convenient, or newton per coulomb that is more convenient. All right, so now we're going to go back and try to figure out how much charge is on our little oil drop. And we're going to solve for that by the condition that this oil drop is in equilibrium, so that the sum of the forces is zero. So for equilibrium, I add up all of the y components of forces, and those sum to zero. We're going to look and see what that tells us. So I have two forces that have a y component. I have the Coulomb force and the vector for the weight. So as vectors, I'm just saying I add those two together. If I think about those in terms of our coordinates where y goes up, we're going to have q times the magnitude of the electric field, and then minus mg times the force of gravity is pointing down, equal to zero. 
Let's move that to the other side. Q times the electric field is equal to the weight of the oil drop. And solve for Q. The weight of the oil drop over the electric field strength. The mass was 1 times 10 to the minus 15 kilograms. G, 9.81 meters per second squared. And the electric field strength we just found. And now I'm going to write it as newtons per coulomb instead of volts per meter because what I have in the numerator, kilogram meter per second squared, is a newton. So we'll arrive at charge, just for the sake of argument with significant figures here, 3.27 times 10 to the minus 18 coulombs. You actually need a more precise measurement of the mass to support having all three of those digits, but it's just for the sake of argument right now. Then we want to think, is that charge a reasonable value? Would that show up in an experiment? So it's also like asking how many elementary charges are in our charge Q. So that number of charges would be our charge on the oil drop, the elementary charge, 3.27 times 10 to the minus 18 coulombs over 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs the elementary charge, and we get that to be 20.4. That 0.4 is a bit problematic. This would be an example of one of the data points that once you had uh, sort of a trend in what the elementary charge is, this would be one of the data points that doesn't fit. Um, so in Millikan's work, these would be sort of chucked out. Uh, don't recommend doing that in lab. Um, but this would be an example of like a, a data point that had some systematic error in it that was giving you uh, a fraction of an elementary charge that's not possible.